Paraben's E3 forensic platform focuses on the acquisition and analysis of evidence associated with smartphones. The acquisition process for a variety of phones, including Apple and Android devices, as well as GPS and tablets. After the acquisition is complete, E3 will look for data associated with the cloud and provide collection options as well. Once all the data is collected, E3 focuses on the analysis of all the popular apps. The unique app analysis portion of E3 allows you to see the data associated with all the apps on the device. And with over 130 different viewers and parsers, you can easily navigate and parse the data. The following tutorials will walk you through the analysis of data from Apple iOS devices as well as Android devices. If you are interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one demonstration, please reach out to us at forensics at paraben.com. Let us dive into the world of smartphone investigations. We will start out by looking at an iOS device. With E3, the acquisitions will change based on the firmware version and model. With this overview, I have already done a logical acquisition and enacted keychain data collection. Once we have our device imaged, we can expand all the nodes. We will start with parse data. We can see some useful information as we dive in, such as Bluetooth data and what was paired with our device. We can see the connection, time, device name, and even iCloud identifiers. We see a variety of paired and non-paired devices in Bluetooth connections. When we move from details like this to messages, we can see high volumes of data. To make the review easier, they have been broken into 10,000 messages per view window. As we select the section, we can see information such as conversation ID, corresponding ID, the type of message, and whether it was in inbox or outbox, as well as the sender recipient numbers. If we keep scrolling, we will see the textual data as well as the date timestamps and more. There is a lot of metadata associated with messaging on smartphones, and E3 wants to show it all. If messages were audio messages, that data is also transcribed and displayed. Unique properties to messages such as recall, deleted, or edited are key points in the message metadata that are displayed for the investigator's reference. When we see items like attachment types, E3 also provides us with where that data was found so we can reference back to the source. Other parse data might include internet browser history and cookies. We can see the artifacts we would expect with their appropriate time stamps, as well as items such as suspended state browser data and even incognito data. Details from bookmarks, visit count, and if an item was pinned can also be discovered in this parsed data. Other artifact data specific to iOS can be parsed such as the Interaction C data. Interaction C is a database found on Apple devices that tracks the interactions such as text messages of the user with recent contacts. You can dive into this information for details like the duration of a call when it expires, the transcription preview, and more. If we go to the parsed native applications, this iOS health data is also classified as IoT because it can come from the Apple Watch. We see valuable information about the watch and bio data such as the heart rate, current user information, how many steps they took, walking, accelerometer info, flights climbed, sleep, and state of mind. Depending on the version of your Apple Watch, this would also include GPS data. Other valuable data comes from keychain information such as the general password information and the Wi-Fi passwords. This will tell us what Wi-Fi this device has been connected to. We can see the network and the password associated. All the metadata for this information is also captured for review. The keychain data can also be used to capture credentials that can be used with the E3 cloud capture capabilities. General phone data such as the call history, the nature of the call, if it was inbound or outbound, as well as if it was the phone or FaceTime or another app making the call. Contact records and all their details are also included. These details can be anything with the contact, including adding images. If you want to get into the good data, let us jump into apps. Whether an app is parsed or not, E3 guides you to the raw data. This allows you to look at any of the information associated with the app manually. 
This is a wonderful way to quickly see the data of an app that is not parsed or to validate the parsing of an app. With the apps, we see all the valuable metadata from the manufacturer to the category. You can also see if an app was hidden or is password protected or not protected. Even when an app is hidden or protected, E3 will still capture that data and bring it into your forensic image for analysis. We can now jump into a popular app called WhatsApp. This app is designed for messaging, so we can expect to see that type of data. You can see details such as the time and date, sender recipient numbers, the duration, the direction, whether it was incoming or outgoing, the message type, etc. Other apps like Waze might have geolocation data that can show where a person was or where they were going. When reviewing an app, you typically want to review the application permissions. These will show you what risk the app was on the device as potential malware or spyware. It can show if a user has allowed or not allowed an application to access the different device areas. E3 will give you a low suspect, suspect, or highly suspected application rating that is based on the level of access control the app has on the device. Now let us go one level deeper and look at the keychain data to capture data from the cloud. The cloud functions in E3 are included for anything associated with mobile devices with mobile licensing. All we need to do is export our authentication data file outside of our case and import it back in through the cloud import wizard. Once the data is imported, all the available cloud keys are displayed and authentication and capture can occur. Along with all the built-in parsing, you have powerful content analysis functions in E3 that allow you to index textual data and sort data by header. These are valuable functions when working with mobiles as images and other embedded files and apps will be sorted out easily into their categories. The data has been processed and the OCR function can also be completed to allow optical character recognition in multiple languages. If we go into the sorter tab, we can see the variety of files in context to the type of file they are. If I select to review the graphics, I can review thumbnails of the images and choose to do individual file searches. With task threading in E3, I can have multiple tasks running at once. If I want to return to the default view, I can also go to the search area and use one of the many different search options available to me. You can search in over 140 different languages, as well as with unique items like emojis. Searching is also available directly for a file on the right click. Once you have completed your analysis, there are a large variety of reports that can be run that easily share the data with others. Some of the reports are also available in other languages besides English. Let us dive into the world of smartphone investigations with Android. With E3, the acquisitions will change based on the firmware version and model. With this overview, I have already done an acquisition. With Android devices, there are multiple ways to acquire the device from logical to rooting. There are a lot of acquisition options that are firmware and manufacturer dependent. I am going to start by expanding the nodes in the case to see what available data I can examine. The first area is the activity timeline. This is a unique artifact that allows us to see everything that was running on the Android device at a given time. You can distinguish between what the device was running and what the user was running. This can be a great asset if doing a car crash investigation or a potential exploitation of a device investigation. Everything down to the second is shown in this list. Let us jump over to the call history where we can see the typical timestamp metadata and what activities there were on the device. Next, we can look at authentication data. This is a directory that is created by E3. The authentication data file in the directory contains potential cloud login details and can be brought back into our case as additional evidence using the cloud import wizard. To do the import, you will export out the file and then import it through the cloud import wizard. Our mobile licensing includes cloud functionality for mobile related keys. E3 has specialized tools for more complicated captures like Google Data that are demonstrated in an additional tutorial video. 
Now let us go into the media store associated with Android. You can see a variety of data that includes the name, the title, the size, the date that it was added, the date that it was modified, and the duration. You can also see metadata such as alarms, ringtones, etc. We can also see other default items such as the default browser, calendar, etc. Where we get into what a user was doing on the device is when we dive into apps. We always start with the installed applications list. This allows us to get an overview of all the apps our user was working with. This is where you can start to look at the details from either a parsed perspective or a raw data perspective. The navigation of data in the apps is easy with E3. One of the unique features of E3 is the breakdown of the app permissions, so you can quickly see if there's potential for malware or spyware on the device. Each level of permission receives a ranking of potential risks. Details that are seen with any of the apps on the device include a lot of different properties, images, etc. We see this with a default app for contacts. When we move into the messaging, we see a variety of messaging from SMS to MMS to RCS, all are available in E3. You can see the services and properties associated with each message time. Depending on the type of image you did, you might also be able to recover messages and review that data. When you look at items such as attachments, all of the properties are also available. So if location services were turned on and associated with an image, you will be able to review and find that data in your searches. If I go back into the installed applications area, I can start to look at some of the apps. The data associated with WhatsApp is displayed and all the properties are available to me. If they used apps such as Google Maps or Chrome, I can also see the details of those items. Let's talk a bit about analysis. Using the powerful content analysis wizard, I can have the data sorted by header so I can easily review it by context of the type of data. So all the items such as spreadsheets, graphics, multimedia, etc. are together for a quick review. There are also enhanced options with using the Image Analyzer add-on where image data can be categorized for you. When the Content Analysis Wizard has run and the index is generated, you can use that data to do some advanced searches in E3. The search options allow for the discovery of data through a variety of techniques. Simple searches from the index are very quick and the data to review is listed below. You can click on the results and add them to a report or a bookmark easily. Once data is added to the report, you can go to the report wizard to generate a report that shows the results. There are a variety of report options where you can customize the report to your organization. You can see the search results in the report and the report can be shared with others. This is just one of many different report types available in E3. Please reach out if you're interested in a personal one-on-one -on -one demonstration at forensics at paraben.com.